Streaming worldwide, this is the Gospel America Television Network. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. And we want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. Our God is an all-knowing God. Our God is an all-wise God. But I'm so thankful that our God is not a selfish God. And I say that because God lets us know what lies ahead of us so that we can prepare ourselves to be better for him and to be eternally with him. So my brothers and sisters, let's get ready to hear what God has to say to us. We invite you. Come on. Let's go to church. Sometimes we're faced with overwhelming situations, and when we're faced with overwhelming situations, we got to trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Don't let the situation overtake you. Let the God in you overtake the situation. Amen? Hallelujah. I know it's hard, and I know it's difficult, but God specializes in handling the difficult stuff. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And amen, amen. How many of you are glad to see that rain this morning? Hallelujah. We bless God on the, this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go where? Into the house of the Lord. So if you're glad this morning, come on and put those blessed hands together one more time. Amen, amen. How many of you came to just lift up the name of Jesus? Amen. We got two candidates that the, that the devil can't have anymore. Amen. They're ready to go down in the water, but right now they're saved in the name of Jesus. So we are so glad to be in the house of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 24, it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand? Stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He has he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. But I love that part. Let me skip to verse 7. It says, Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And who's gonna come in, somebody? Who's gonna come in? try to do our, our motto this morning and I want you to read it with your outside voices what, what do your outside voices sound like yeah. uh, okay I like that I, I like that so that means we're not mumbling right, All right. Yeah. that means we're not whispering right? right so you got permission right to be as loud as you want to be not unruly but loud for the Lord amen amen, amen. amen. are we ready here we go we are Christ centered, Bible based, family friendly church. We worship God and demonstrate godly love by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We develop kingdom minded disciples and minister to the needs of the community. Amen, amen. And now, while you're standing, just tell a neighbor, say, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. Tell somebody else, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. Say, come on, help me praise him this morning. Help me praise him this morning. Say, help me praise him this morning. Amen. Deacons, are y'all going to praise him this morning? Ministers, are y'all going to praise him this morning? Women, are y'all going to praise him this morning? Yeah, men, are you going to praise him? Hallelujah. Everybody, are we going to praise him?
I'm still alive. Testimony. Yeah. I could have been dead and gone. Lord, but Lord, Lord you let me live on. Oh, I am, I am a living testimony. testimony. I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. I think Jerry goes after miracles performed in my life. Had mercy on me. I didn't even deserve to be alive. When I faced dangers, I could not see. You kept your angels, you kept them all around me. And I thank the Lord, I'm still alive. Oh, I am, I am a living testimony. Yeah. I could have been dead and gone. Lord, you let me live on. I am, I am a living testimony. I thank the Lord I'm still alive. I've had many friends and loved ones gone on before me. Lord, it caused my heart to bleed. I realized it could have been me. I know I'm not worthy, but you keep on keeping me. And I thank you, Lord, for keeping me alive. Oh, I am, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. Testimony. I thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. I thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. I thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. Got food on my table. I'm still alive. Got a roof over my head. I'm still alive. 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 You know I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Got air in my lungs. I'm still alive. And I can breathe. I'm still alive. You know I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I said I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Oh, I am. I am a living testimony. Could have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. Oh, I am, I am a living testimony. I thank the Lord, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. You know I'm still alive. 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 You know I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I said I'm still alive. 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 Oh, I am. I am a living testimony. And I thank the Lord. I'm still alive. You see, I say this because I had been diagnosed a few, way, quite a few years back. 
I had cancer. Come on, sir. I had surgery. Come on. And within a year and a half to two, Come on. they told me my numbers were coming back. Come on. I went to radiation. On, me too. And within two, two and a half years, my numbers were coming back. I went to radiation. Then they told me again, your numbers are real high. So we're going to take you, send you, not take me. We're going to send you to see where it is. Since you've had everything else, we want to see if it's moved to your bones or if it's somewhere in your body. I had all types of, they sent me through these machines and everything. So they told me, says, your doctor want to see you, he want to give you your results from the test. I walk into the office, never was afraid. Whatever the answer is, I'm ready. But he told me, he says, we gave you the test, but we couldn't find anything. You know? So, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there just wondering, well, you say my numbers are up and you can't find anything. And then I start to think. And I thought about what I did. You see, I wanted to tell him to say, hey, you're looking in the wrong place. Because I gave it to God. I gave it to God. So, <laughs> if you want to find it, you need to talk to him because I gave it to him. So, I, I, I mean, if, if I talk to him tomorrow and he say, well, we found it. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because as of right now, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. shout wherever you are give God all the glory for he's worthy of all the glory the honor and the praise amen brother Hutton couldn't sit down on his testimony you know what and I'm so thankful sister Anissa so graciously said yes when I put the Bible in her hand and said will you read this in her eyes she was looking at me, and the eyes may not have said yes. But what came out of her mouth was yes. So I disregarded the eyes, and I just listened to the mouth. Amen? Praise God. If you all would turn with us to the book of 2 Thessalonians, we're going to take a look at chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Amen. And when you have it, if you wouldn't mind standing in reverence to the reading of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Just hold on a minute. She's ready. She's, re she's, she's, she's anxious to read it because she's, I'm ready to sit down now. <laughs> she's going to do well. She's going to do well. 
Amen. You do have it? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Nisa. And to give you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flames, fire takes vengeance. vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do, do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Amen. When he comes, oh. Amen. Well, go ahead. Since you want to go, go on and start it. Go ahead. When he comes, wait, sorry. When he comes in the day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because of the testimony among you who and among you who has believed. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Sister Anissa. Amen, amen. The word says, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory in his power. Amen. I'd like to speak with you this morning from the topic Nothing good happens in hell. Nothing good happens in hell. Amen. Amen. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Amen. Father God, we just come before you now in the name of your son, Jesus. And we come to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. We come to lift you up, for thou art God and God Almighty. There's none like you in all the heavens, nor in the earth. We bless you for who you are, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and speak now. Come, O oh Lord, and speak. And Lord, as you speak, give us all ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, and all God's children said amen, 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 and amen. We want to thank God for who he is and all that he has done. Our God is amazing, and he is worthy to be praised. One of the things I want to let you know is that last week we talked about the glories associated with the new home that God has prepared for Christians in heaven. And we need to understand that just as heaven is a reality, it's important to know that there's a counterbalance to heaven's blessings of love, joy, peace, eternal uh, communion, and eternal communion with God. And that counterbalance is hell because hell is the place of judgment, punishment, and eternal separation from God. So everything that God has choose to bless you with in heaven, you can understand that you will be condemned by in hell. Amen. And you know, we don't do a lot of preaching about hell today. Because people don't want to hear about God pouring out his wrath on the ungodly. Everybody just wants to get the good thing. We want to hear about everything that God's going to do for us. How he's going to take us farther. How he's going to raise us and exalt us up. But if we're going to get into the word of God, we got to get into all of the word. Amen. See, the Bible lets us know that there is a day coming. When we look in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's a day coming that all living souls are going to experience the coming of the day of the Lord. And some people will look forward to the coming of the day of the Lord and others will dread people, well, others will dread the coming of the day of the Lord. Because some folks are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and going to receive the blessings of the Lord. And others are going to stand before the great white throne of judgment and receive the judgment of God. My brothers and my sisters, 
The Bible tells us about the horrors of Sheol, Hades, Hell, Gehenna, and all of these refer to the future place of punishment and the eternal dwelling place of the wicked. Nothing good happens in hell. See, contrary to popular belief, hell is not going to be a place where you're going to grab, where you're going to gather together with all the other unbelievers and y'all going to pop open a Budweiser and there's going to be a party that's going to happen all night long. No, the Bible never talks about there being a party in hell. Instead of falling into the devil's lies and believing the myths that the devil promotes about hell, I want to step on his head today. I want to step on his head today and, and give you some information that will prayerfully spur a desire in you to avoid that horrible place. Want to step on his head so that when you hear what hell is really like, that you'll say, you'll make up in your mind, no, I'm not even going to get close to going to hell because that's not a place that I want to be. I want to tell somebody today that nothing good happens in hell. Yes. See, by the grace of God, after you hear who goes to hell, and what hell is like, you're going to say, that's not the place for me. If we look at the people who go to hell, we can get a better understanding of why we don't want to go there. The Bible says that hell is a prepared place for prepared beings. If man had not given in to temptation to sin in the Garden of Eden, we wouldn't have to be worried about hell. Because if you look back in Matthew 25 and 41, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God didn't prepare hell fire for us. He prepared it for the devil and his angels after their fall from heaven. God's design for us was to, to be with him in eternal fellowship. To experience the joy of the Lord's presence. To experience the goodness of God. But after Eve's encounter with the serpent. After Adam ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man's fate was changed. Because after they rebelled against God. Sin now began to rule in this world. See, man continues to indulge in sin and fall short of the glory of God. For those who want to embrace the life of sin, somebody say embrace. embrace. Yeah, I want you to, I want you to get, a, get a hold of that because I, I don't want it to get a hold of you. For those who embrace the life of sin, and continue to indulge in sinful ways. The Bible says that the punishment of hell awaits. Now before you get ready to run out of here and say, I don't want to hear what that preacher got to say. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Don't you look at the man behind the pulpit. You look at the word coming from the word. Amen. Amen. Psalm 91 and 7, I mean 9 and 17 says, that the wicked are destined to return to Sheol or hell. Who are the wicked? These are the people who refuse to believe and obey the gospel. I said they refuse to believe and obey the gospel. Don't go walking around talking about, I got Jesus. Don't go walk, walking around saying, everybody look at the cross around my neck. And all you do all day long is cuss and fuss and cause a ruckus and tear up stuff and live like the devil. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we ought to walk in the newness of life. And if you are not walking in the newness of life, you better go stand before the spiritual mirror and say, Lord, am I really saved? If you're still following after the devil. Ask yourself, who is your father? 
Is it God Almighty or is it the father of lies who lied to you and make deceive you and make you thinking that you are saved when you are not saved? The wicked are those who refuse to believe and obey the gospel. They did sin's work and now they got to pay the wages of sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We got to do what God says if we want to get God's blessing. But if you choose not to do what God says, that's your choice. And you can walk on down that road. But if you look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, when Jesus comes, there's going to be a price to pay. Because the Bible says he's going to take vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor, that message of, by, of a fire and brimstone, that message turns me off. Well, I want to tell you something. I pray that it turns you off from God, from hell, and turns you on to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that people will experience everlasting punishment and destruction in hell. For those who have chosen to turn against God, the wicked are bringing about their own destruction. So if you wake up on the other side of the Jordan and find yourself in hell, don't go shaking your fist at God. Don't go blaming the preacher. Don't go blaming your mama. Don't go blaming your daddy. Blame your own self for bringing destruction on your own self. I watched a movie called Left Behind. And in the movie, Jesus Christ had already come and, and all the righteous had been gathered and gone up to heaven. And those who were left behind were in search of answers, trying to figure out what's going on. And one man ran to his church. And when he ran to his church, he opened up the door and he found his pastor right there on his knees. And he said, did you get left behind too? And he said, yes. And he got mad at the pastor. He said, how come you didn't tell me? How come you didn't help me? How come you didn't deliver me? And the pastor looked at him and said, you had the same Bible I had. <laughs> so we ain't got nobody to blame but ourselves. If when the Lord comes, and the dead in Christ are caught up to meet him in the air. And those who are left behind, those who are yet alive, will also be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. When he comes, if you get left behind, you can't blame nobody but yourself. The Bible says that those who are in hell, they're going to be judged by God. They've been judged by God and they are losing or have lost the opportunity to experience the goodness of God forever. Ain't nobody going to be able to pray you out of hell. Once you are there, you are there. The ungodly are going to join the devil and demons in hell. Let me dispel another myth. Don't you think that the devil is going to be beating up on you? Why are you in hell? You know how we like to say when the lightning is flashing, when it's raining, and the sun is out. Old folks used to say that the devil is beating his wife. Hallelujah. But when time comes, when hell's gates are opened up, I want to let you know that the devil is going to be suffering in hell just like all those who are condemned in hell. The demons are going to be suffering in hell just like all those who are condemned to hell. The devil is not going to be in charge because God is the one that's in charge. And if God is in charge, God has determined what's going to happen to those who refuse to accept him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't talk about there being any joy in hell. There's nothing good that's going to happen in hell. That's why God sent me here today to show you what hell really looks like. You need to understand what hell is like. When you read the Bible's description of hell, you will learn that it's not a very inviting place. The word of God reveals that people condemned to hell will suffer unending misery. Pastor, I wish you'd get off this subject. 
Well, if you wish me to get off this subject, I wish you to stop living like the devil. If you wish me to get off this subject, let us start doing what God says to do. Hell is going to be a place of unending misery. Jesus said in Matthew 8 and 12, as he speaks about the events of the end times, when the wicked are going to be shut out of the light of heaven. Hallelujah. Shut out of the light of heaven. They're going to be condemned to a life of without any joy. They're going to be condemned to a life without any hope. Everybody that's going to be going to hell, as Bible says, is going to, they're going to eternally weep in sorrow and they're going to gnash their teeth. They're going to gnash their teeth as they suffer the pain of the torment that they're going through. They're going to gnash their teeth as they experience the anguish of hell. We like to talk about heaven and we say God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Well, when those who are in hell, there's going to be no wiping away. They'll just be crying day in and day out. Hell is not a place where you want to be. When, what's even sadder is that when people get there and they continue to cry out for the Lord, they won't cry out for the mercy of the Lord, but they'll continue to remain rebellious against the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some people here on this earth right now that have breath yet in their body. They'll hear the word and they're going to choose to remain rebellious to the Lord. I want to tell you that if you choose to remain rebellious to the Lord, that God has already prepared a place for you. But brothers and sisters, hell is not where you want to be. In Luke 16 and 24, Jesus tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And both these men died. But when the, when the rich man died, he went to hell. And when Lazarus died, he went to Abraham's bosom. When the rich man was in hell, the Bible says that he cried out in pain because of extreme thirst and he was tormented in the fire of hell. I said he was tormented in the fire of hell. Can you imagine burning in the furnace of fire day in and day out? You wake up on Monday and you're burning. You wake up on Tuesday and you're burning. You wake up on Wednesday and you're burning. You wake up on Thursday and you're burning. You wake up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you're still burning. See, if you go to hell... If you look in Matthew 13 and 42, the Bible says that eternal torment will be the fate of the ungodly. Hell is not a place where you want to be. Not only do you have to deal with the fire, not only do you have to deal with the anguish, not only do you have to deal with the pain, not only do you have to deal with the torment, but the Bible says that in hell is a place where the worm dieth not. According to some commentators, they say that the world will be your troubled mind. Your mind will always remind you of the foolish stuff that you did in life. Your mind will always remind you how you had opportunity after opportunity to avoid hell. But because you chose the foolish things of the world, because you chose to be a liar, because you chose to be a cheat, because you chose to be drunk all the time, because you chose to be an abuser, because you chose to execute wrath, because you chose to be a murderer, because you chose to shake your fist at God and do everything that you wanted to do. You chose to go to hell. The only thing that's left for you is regret and guilt for the rest of eternity. For the rest of eternity. For the rest of eternity. That's a horrible way to live. The wicked are never going to know the peace of God that passeth all understanding. You, crank, you can't cry out, Abba, Father. You can't cry out, Abba, Father, because God was not your father. You can't cry out, Abba, Father, because you rejected Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can't cry out, Abba, Father, because you refused to repent of your sin. 
You can't cry out, Abba, Father, because you walked in your own way. The only thing that you have to look forward to now is the blackness and darkness and hopelessness and despair and the torment that goes along with being in hell. I want to tell somebody that nothing good happens in hell. And when you dig into God's word and you look and see what God's word is like, or hell is really like, Revelation 14 verses 10 through 11 said that hell is designed as a place where the wicked will experience the full, the fullness of God's fury and God's judgment. Instead of being on the end of God's mercy, you know, as believers in Christ, we like to say that grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But when the ungodly get into hell, when they're burning in the lake of fire and brimstone, the only thing that they'll be able to do is they'll be able to say hopelessness and agony is following me all the days of my life. When they get to that place, where they're thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, brimstone being that sulfur. When they get into that place where they're under judgment like Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis chapter 19, when they get into that place where they feel that eternal fire and brimstone, when they get to that place where they see that lake, that it looks like molten lava that's coming out of a volcano, and then God says, depart from me, I never knew you. When they get to that place where God says, I'm casting you into the lake of fire. When they get to that place where they're suffering the pain and agony forever and ever and ever, they'll know that there's nothing good that's going to happen in hell. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that hell is a real place. And the godless of this world are going to experience the great pain and sorrow of hell. Not just today, but they're going to experience it tomorrow. Not just tomorrow, but they're going to experience forever for all those who refuse to receive the grace and the love of God get ready get ready get ready I said get ready because the wrath of God is getting ready to come upon you get ready get ready because God is already determined that evil's not gonna have the last word get ready get ready because the devil and all his demons are going to be thrown into heaven. You might be laughing at God right now. You might be laughing at the saints right now. But I'm going to tell you that the day of judgment is coming. Hallelujah. The day of reconciliation is coming. Hallelujah. And when the day of judgment comes, God's anger is going to be satisfied. God is going to execute judgment. God is going to pronounce a sentence. I want somebody to know that the Lord is going to stand in judgment and God's judgment is righteous God's judgment is true God's judgment is good you might not think it's good if you're the one cast into the lake of fire you might not think it's good if you're the one on the other side of judgment but I got some good news for you I got some good news for you you don't have to go to hell it's not a foregone his only begotten son by the name of Jesus Jesus the Christ who came down through 40 and two generations who went to the cross and died on the cross shed his blood on the cross on Calvary if you will acknowledge Jesus as his son if you will believe in your heart that Jesus came the savior if you will call Lord, 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 I need you right now. Lord, Lord, while I got breath in my body, I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm going to repent. I 
choose to repent of my own ways. I choose to give up my old ways. Lord, I'm coming to you. I want you, Lord. I know, I know, I know you are the God of all creation. Lord, before time, before you pronounce judgment, I'm going to bow my knee. And as I bow my knee, I am going to confess that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I'm going to profess because, God, I'm looking for something different. I don't need what this world has to offer. I don't need what the devil has to offer, but Heavenly Father, I want what you offer, cause I know that nothing good happens in hell. I know that there's eternal torment in hell, but oh my God, oh my God, I want to hear the words, well done, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to hear the words, come on up, come on up, and receive your reward. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. But I got news for you. Make the choice. You choose whether you're going to go to heaven or whether you're going to go to hell. You choose where you want to spend eternity. You say, Pastor, I don't know if I can get with this. Well, I want to ask you this. If I'm wrong about hell, what have you lost? You made your profession. If I'm right, and I believe I'm right because the Bible is the inspired word of God. If I'm right, then you have everything to gain by receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. Nothing good happens in hell. Nothing good. I said nothing good. I don't care how you try to spin it. I don't care how you try to turn it. Nothing good happens in hell. Amen. Amen. And amen. We want to give God the glory and the honor and the praise for his word. This is how I know that God loves us. Because the Bible gives us both the good, the bad, and the ugly. God doesn't hold back. God doesn't just present all the good and leave out the bad stuff. See, God wants all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is in his word. If you go from Genesis to Revelation, if you make this Bible your best friend, let me tell you, God will enrich your life. Amen. But the thing is, we have to read it. And you some may say, I really can't understand what the Bible's saying. Well, if you can't understand the King James, get you a new King James. You can't understand the new King James, get you a good news. Get you a God's word. I'm going to tell you how I got to understand the King James. I opened up the King James is when I got to those parts where I didn't understand. I looked at my NIV and I read the NIV and then I went back and read the King James and said, oh, what that mean? That's what that means. And after a while, God had built up my vocabulary where I could understand. But I had to put the work in. God wants us to put the work in. 
If you put in the work, trust me, God will bless you above and beyond measure. Amen? I want to introduce you to my long-lost cousin, Pastor Lee Estefan. <laughs> And as we get <laughs> yeah. as we get ready to do the benediction, I'm gonna ask Pastor Pope, if you don't mind, sir, if you would do our prayer and benediction for us today. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Sister Todd. I go where you were going, and then we'll have the close of prayer. Let's everybody stand. Let the church say amen. finish of our faith father we come just before you now to say thank you I want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you have brought us over safe and sound thus far we just want to thank you for you looked over our many mistakes and you saw our needs and here we are this morning standing before thee Oh, God, say thank you in the name of Jesus. The word has been declared. Oh, God, the spirit has entered into our hearts. And we just want to say thank you. For you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And you brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. I want to say thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for the pastor and thank you for his servant that's by his side. Oh God, thank you for the word. Oh God, that he's declared to each of us this morning in the name of Jesus. Bless every one of us in the building this morning, one by one and name by name. We ask you to be with us now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Create us a clean heart. Oh, God, fix us, fix us, keep us in thy care. Oh, God, let us look to the Lord and be this best. Father, God, we come before thee just now to say thank you. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for this week. Our Father, that you washed over us, and we are yet in the land of the living. We are able to pick and choose our own praying ground. Oh, thank you that we still have the activities of our limbs cold in our right now. We just want to say thank you. Thank you we know who we are, and we know whose we are. We want to say thank you in the name of Jesus. Bless this family. Bless this pastor here. Oh, God, bless each one of them, name by name and one by one. Take us, oh, God, and lead us on to higher heights and greater depths. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we say amen. 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 You know, one of the things that we as believers do we love the fact that we have the opportunity to go to heaven. But God wants us to make sure that we're not on our way to hell. One of the ways he makes sure is he shows us the character of the people who are going to hell. He shows us, gives us a glimpse of what hell is going to be like. My brothers and my sisters, 
one thing that we never want to do is we never want to go to hell. Why? Because nothing good happens in hell. I don't care what anybody tells you, nothing good happens in hell. So, I want to ask you, and I want to, I want to challenge you. Get down in your word. Take a look in the book of Revelation. Take a look in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Take a look in the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1. Check out your word and see what God has to say about hell. And after you read it for yourself, you'll realize that nothing good happens in hell. Hey, we want to encourage you, if you're ever here in San Angelo, to come by Galilee Missionary Baptist Church and join us for a time of worship. We have our worship on Wednesday evening at 6.15 p.m. when we engage in Bible study. We have our worship on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. in our Sunday school. And we have our worship at 10 a.m. during the worship hour on Sunday morning. Please feel free to come and join us because we would love to have the opportunity to love on you. May God bless you and may God keep you. That is our prayer. Have a blessed day.